so oxygen uh, to water. Uh, so what is the problem? Okay. So what I show here is, is a free energy diagram. Now by now we're all experts in this. And so what I show here is free energy diagram on platinum one on one, which is the best known, one of the best known elemental metal catalysts for this process. So what is the problem? This is the voltmeter is now reading 1.23. So this is versus hydrogen uh, H plus. And so what you see here is that at 1.23, the free energy of oxygen and water is the same. And then you go through sequential addition of proton and electron. So you first activate oxygen as OOH, then you dissociate, then you form oxygen, and then OOH and water. Right? At 1.23, this is not possible. The reason it's not possible is because you cannot get oxygen on the surface as OOH. Actually, neither can you get OH off the surface as water. So these are the two difficult steps in this process. So you need to crank down the potential. So you bring the voltage down to about 0.76. And at this potential, the reaction scheme is downhill and free energy. And the most difficult step is the step associated with the removal of OH to water. So naively, one would think that, well, all one needs to do is to try and weaken this binding you know, relative to platinum, to weaken this, then you can sort of get a better catalyst. And, and that, that idea is attractive, but here's the problem. What I show here is a calculated free energy of OH, O, and OH, so the, 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 three, the three intermediates involved in that process, as a function of the OH binding energy. Right? So what this immediately shows is that they're not uncorrelated. They're, they're essentially, there is a correlation between OOH binding and OH binding, uh, and obviously OH binding and, and OH binding correlated, and OH and O. Right? What that means is that you, know, you cannot do this indefinitely. But what is even worse is the fact that there's a near constant scaling between OOH and OH. Right? These two scale with, with, uh, with, a, with a distance of about 3.2, and this actually immediately gives you the, the, the 0.4 limit that we saw. Right? On an, the equilibrium potential is 1.23, so these are separated by two proton and electron transfer steps. So the free energy difference between these two should be twice 1.23, which is 2.46. Now this difference unfortunately is 3.2. So what that means is essentially 3.2 and you need to be at 2.46. So that gets you this 0.8 and they're separated by two steps. So that immediately gives you this 0.4 volt limit that we have seen in almost all catalysts. And, and, and that sort of, uh, you, can, you can take this picture and then, and then, and then, and then construct, uh, construct a rate analysis to start to ask which step would be limiting. And then you get these two legs of the uh, two legs of what is uh, two legs of an oxygen reduction activity volcano, and the 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 black line is the is the theoretical prediction, and if the dots lie on the black line, that means the theory is experiments. Uh, theory is doing well in predicting the experiments. And what's actually seen is that uh, platinum is good, but there's there's room for going up. So this is on a on a on a log e, log to the e scale. So there is there's about a factor of 50 that one can go up in rate. And it's actually it actually uh, platinum three nickel, which is shown to be better than uh, than platinum, actually falls uh, falls very nicely in this analysis, where it's better because it's on the right leg of the okay. Now, now one can one can then say, well, this is only one class of materials. This is only the one 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 facet, which is the dense facet of, of a metal. Now, what happens when you when you change the story on a, on a different facet? So, a nanoparticle, which is where these cat these catalysis processes run. You know, they, they sort of have this one on one facet, one zero zero facet. What is the story there? The story is exactly similar. We follow this, this scaling almost universally. And, and so what this gives you is essentially a universal activity volcano for any fuel cell catalyst. And that 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 essentially sets the limit for whatever is your catalyst. And there are a whole host of materials, one on materials uh, that are there. And what's actually seen that there are actually a couple of interesting features that are seen. What is seen is that the one on one facet always lies to the left of the one on one, and left in the scale means that it binds stronger. This is not surprising because the hexagonal facet is, a, is has more um, uh, is is uh, the the one zero zero facet is more open, so it wants to bind intermediates stronger. And what actually it points to is, is something very interesting here: platinum three nickel one on one is active because of its, its position on the right leg of the wall. You know, so that's the weak binding leg. And then platinum three nickel one oh oh is active because of its position on the left white leg of the volcano. What this what this points to is that if one were to pick a catalyst to make, then then uh, ideally you would want the dense facet to lie on the weak binding leg so that its more open facets could also.